Welcome, welcome, everybody. Hello, hello. Uh, did we already get an announcement for this? Yes. I know our MVP on this is usually SGP. Just, just a camera. That's where. That's why people are showing up. This week, uh, of course, of course he did. We don't even need to worry about Craig this week. I, I feel like he's, uh, you know, he's not gonna remember to record. Mm, fair enough. Craig has been real uppity. <laughs> you know how Craig is. All right, so let's let's uh, go ahead and get the people uh, a little info. What's going on here? This is our weekly, hour-long discussion where the three of us, we are the hosts of the Crypto Basic Podcast. We are going to comment on some our cryptocurrency subreddit articles from the week, and we're going to give our <laughs> opinions. Then we're we're going to open it up for a little uh, uh, Q and A afterwards, and maybe a BitConnect creditor meeting. You know, whatever it needs to have. All right. So actually, I wouldn't mind kicking things off here if you guys don't mind. This Go is a pretty it. interesting question. Um, nice hodler ask when moon. Oh, yep. That is uh, that that is one of the more interesting questions. Well, we still don't have another <laughs> moon on. program in place. Wait, wait, wait. All right. So number one, I don't see a question mark, so I don't believe this is actually a question. Uh, when looks like the first name of maybe somebody in Asia. Oh. So this looks like a, somebody's name. Oh, right. that's his name. Yeah. Right, right, You forgot right, to capitalize right. it, but that's common on the internet. I, so, I, I apologize nice for hardware. misunderstanding there. And welcome, Wen. Yes, Wen. So, welcome to the chat. Welcome to the chat, Wen. All right. So <laughs> let's go ahead and kick things off. Just like Mike said, we're going to be covering some basic stories, talk about funny comments you guys made. Just, uh, you know, BS back and forth a little bit about what has happened this week on the subreddit. And one of the first stories that I saw when I was looking at the top stories of the week is this post right here, which talked about CNN having somebody. Here's a direct link, by the way, to the video if somebody wants to watch it. So the title was People Around the World Are Starting to Trust Bitcoin More Than the Central Banks. Before we dive in, any, th any thoughts on the title, guys? <laughs> I, 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 have, I have not looked at this particular post, but I, I feel like what's going to happen is the title is going to be misleading. <laughs> here, here, I actually did watch the video because I was very interested in this, and I will comment after your comments. Uh, all right, fair enough. So the, the video was actually uh, an interview with a gentleman named Ross Shortkin. So he was the author of a book called Too Big to Fail. And the focus of the interview actually was about how this – Authors basically saying that the crash of 2008 is the underlying kind of like division that we see that people are really angry that trust in institutions has really gone down and he makes a direct link to um, to the rise of Trump the rise of populism let me take a quick pause here I think we have what these got in ground Lord somebody no. can't hear can anybody else here no no he's not in the I don't see him on our Oh, no, he is there. Never mind. Yeah, he's right here. Oh, now he is. Okay, everybody else seems to be able to hear, so... All right, we can keep going. All right, uh... All right, Grindlord, try uh, turning up the volume or something. <laughs> uh, see if there's so... any devices that are messing up your computer. If he can't hear you, don't give him instructions on what to do. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? Okay, <laughs> raise the volume three. <laughs> uh... All right, so anyway, going back to the interview, right? This guy's in there talking about how what happened in 2008 is directly connected to what we see as the rise of populism. We saw Occupy Wall Street and the Tea Party on the other side. He specifically talks about the end of trust in institutions, in experts, in media, right? Like the rise of fake news. And there's a small segment of it where the interviewer, the CNN anchor, asked him, well, you even make a connection to Bitcoin. You think that Bitcoin is a continuation of this. And sure enough, the guy says, like, yes, Bitcoin is a result of distrust in the elite. And he basically, I get that going up to the 2008 crisis, there's like an unspoken agreement between the haves and the have nots. And his statement is basically like, look, the have nots are okay with having less, but there was an understanding that the haves would look after things 
and that once you have the 2000 crash and it looks like nobody was in charge or they were just looking out for themselves that that's when the trust shattered and now people look at something like bitcoin that isn't ran by anybody that isn't ran by elites and therefore or put their trust in that vehicle so it really wasn't like a bitcoin themed interview i felt like the bitcoin comment was a little bit more in passing and the connection was tenuous it wasn't really cnn saying people are trusting bitcoin more than central banks um my favorite comment however was from vermilion user vermilion dit and uh, i don't know if any of you guys play pokemon but you know vermilion city but he, this comment was this year central banks devalued the dollar by 1.5 percent my bitcoin devalued by percent. <laughs> i mean you know whatever obviously that uh, that means that the article's wrong it, it, it's also kind of funny how long was this uh how long was this interview only five minutes oh okay so like well, it might have been longer but this clip was yeah the clip minutes. was five minutes long it sounded like this is a long interview where like they kind of mentioned a little bit about bitcoin and it was just taken as like everybody that is what it was to me yeah but look yeah, I, that's I mean, I, what I it's for it very uh, I, yeah, no, I, I found this do very interesting. I didn't really expect it to be, um, you know, kind of an interview with an author about the book that they wrote. Uh, but the exchange was, it was fairly formal. It was fairly well-spoken. And uh, one of the things that, you know, I've said for a while is that the the ability that the internet has provided to the people to to have a social connection at a, at a more frequent level has allowed the traditional financial world to lose a lot of its leverage that it had over people. And what, I, what I'm suggesting by that is if you think about, you know, the 1980s, the 1990s, when the stock market was going through a, you know, technological revolution, it was, tech, it was going through a significant financial gain and, and significant um, growth over those years, you found that you know, people wanted to be a part of it, and the only way they could be a part of it would be to go to these larger financial institutions. You know, I've I've talked with people about what it's like being on Wall Street in the 1990s, and it, it literally, quite literally, felt like a different world. And you know, it's 2018 now. There's so much time that's evolved, and the internet has gone through such a, an evolution that you are now able to be connected to people that are specialists in a field like this. And the amount of money that you need to pay this person for their specialty is so much less than it used to be. And people are just finding so much more efficient ways to invest their money, take control of their financial future. And obviously that 2008 crash, it, it did leave a huge distrust in the people that got burned by it. And I can't imagine that's gonna change anytime soon. Yeah, but okay, so here's a question for you guys though. Uh, you know, since we're still on this 2008 thing and, and banks, I agree with you, Mike, that the internet and now, you know, cryptocurrency has provided, let's say, a platform where people can take their distrust of these institutions and take it somewhere else. But do we really feel that, let's say, Wall Street is less powerful today than it was 10 years ago? Are they have they really lost their grip or their control over society or government? At least, let's say, you know, no, you know, I don't I, guess I don't believe society. that. I believe that the the way that I would describe this, uh, the the first piece of yarn is unraveling. Yeah, I think there's more people today that that will invest in an index fund or uh, like an ETF because they realize that it's strictly better than going to a mutual fund or whatever than there would have been in say 1990 or whatever. I mean, I definitely agree with that. Index funds became much more popular. Uh, but I don't know if that had a lot to do with distrust in Wall Street. I think it had a lot more to do with just economic research that started showing people yeah, shouldn't pay listen, large fees for investment. At the end of the day, people are going to have their own interests in mind. They are going to they're going to decide how important their financial investing future is to them. And they're gonna decide at that point how much work they're gonna put into it. I took my time on this subject i haven't done a lot of research this podcast has actually prompted me to do a decent amount more than i used to and now i'm learning that you actually like can't sit by and just like expect things to fix themselves you actually have to start putting your money in different places where you think that you're, you're going to 
be able to secure your financial future. And I think that crypto is one of the major reasons that people are realizing they have other options. Yep. Uh, one of the things that we've posited before is that this last crash, the 2008, um, the 2008 recession, is not enough to get the public on board, but the next one might be. So when it happens again and everything does and everything goes the exact same way just the way that it happened before and they're like oh yeah we're just gonna like print some more money it's fine no don't nothing to see here it's cool that's when it might be like when more people are finally like we need to find a better alternative because it's just gonna keep happening agreed uh, yeah definitely agreed and, and uh, there's a lot of indications that show we're going in the same direction right like um we all know that economics is usually a boom bust scenario so there should be a normal business cycle but it could definitely be worse than a normal business cycle based on the fact that you know everything is in a bubble right now and in part because central banks have gone a little crazy with the printing over the last decade especially yeah yep so is tether <laughs> yeah well you know tether is just a central bank that's all all right speaking of scams uh, the, we'll, we'll move on for this story. The the Hoku, I found a little exit scam that was on our cryptocurrency. That uh, it wasn't. Oops, it didn't get a ton of. Um, it didn't get a ton of action in the comments. Oops, shit. Nope, that's a preview. <laughs> I had the wrong thing on my. Uh, yeah. I had the wrong. Th I had the wrong thing on my clipboard. All right, let me delete that real quick. Do do do. <laughs> Favorite comment on my ketchup. All right, that's gone. <laughs> so, uh, worst ever. Yeah. So I, I don't know if you guys saw this. This was kind of like far down. It got it got a decent amount of upvotes, but not a lot of action. So this company called Hoku is kind of like doing a basic attention token style, eliminate the middleman in advertising uh, thing, but they appear to have recently exit scammed um <laughs> their their stated reason is that they're being extorted by somebody that's involved with the russian government and now all their money is on hold so they but don't worry like their mo their roadmap is fine everything's gonna be fine they're just, they just might need to raise more funds they're they're like kind of saying that there might be another ico even on top of this but i went through and read this and i thought there were kind of some some hilarious red flags and they raised 18 million dollars so this wasn't like a tiny ico it was like they got some and it such a cautionary tale with all these icos because one of the things we will always say is like if you give a group of people this much money without doing anything are they actually going to follow through and do that thing many times no and many times it was a scam from the beginning so uh, here's some of the red flags that we came up with. Four of the five founders went to the same school in Russia. Uh, and then the fifth one was in all their pictures with them at, like, all kinds of parties. So they had, like, pictures all over their social media of, like, different parties. They had this one where they were at, like, a... It looked like a, 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 a caviar, like, restaurant where they just had this table, this plate in front of them with like 20 different kinds of caviar and I guess it could have been um, you know roe from sushi or whatever but like I don't know if it was expensive or not expensive but it looked expensive and they were all like eating it they've got like pictures of them all over the place just like partying it up uh, the the CMO of the project operates 55 different projects oh 55 projects yes Impressive. 55 projects <laughs> <laughs> that one might have been my favorite. Like, like oh, this guy is, he's a very, very well-respected guy. 55 different projects. Great, great source. Uh, and then uh, it, the biggest red flag was that this was actually not from Russia. It was something, uh, it, it was a project in London that found out about this taking their name and I think their branding. And then got their uh, Telegram shut down because of it. So they had a 20,000 member Telegram shut down right, right before all this started happening. 
and thousand members. I well that it may I think it was twenty thousand. I don't know. That was I didn't actually like write that down. I just remember that in in my head. And uh, yep, it's gone. That's gone. The they they created like another Telegram. They posted that thing about them getting uh, <laughs> extorted. And they're like, nah, guys. And apparently they were using fake names and they're like changing identities and all this stuff. So another another exit scam, another cautionary tale. It sucks that we are kind of going to brush off another $18 million stolen from the crypto community. But we are. So. I mean, yeah, yeah. We've talked about this before. And this is uh, just as a reminder for everybody else. It's one of the extra layers of risk when you're investing directly on ICOs, right? Like, even if it's already difficult enough to find a good project that has a niche that hasn't been met, that has a good team, that has all these different things, right? Um, but on top of that, when you're dealing with an ICO, it's so fresh that there's so many extra elements of risk. Like, when you're investing in a top 10 or top 20 market cap coin, it's already gone through Look, I'm not going to say that everything in there is safe, right? Like, I'll be pretty straightforward. I, I don't like Tron. I don't like uh, a bunch of... Like, BitConnect was in the top 20 when before it went broke. But you're still reducing your overall risk because something like Neo, Cardano, or Ethereum are way past their exit scam phase or their we spent all our money on caviar phase. Like, <laughs> it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Those are important phases, by the way. Right. You, you just got to get past that little hump and now you're like, ah, I don't have to worry about that anymore. You know, like, Vitalik can buy his own caviar and shit. It just, it's relevant. Just throwing it out. Yeah, what, remember that guy that, like, did the exit scam? He, like, shut down the website and posted, like, a beer on a plane. But it was all, oh it was, God. but it was just a prank, bro. <laughs> looked like that I don't remember whatever happened what with that. hilarious prank. Yeah. yeah. What? I'm sure he mysteriously disappeared. That... Yeah, I mean... Like, can you imagine the people that thought their funds were stolen for like 48 hours before he decided to say that the joke was over? And the worst part, by the way, for those of you that didn't, weren't familiar with the story, it was like the, the leader of an ICO, they raised like 20 million, they shut everything down, they empty the offices, and he tweets a picture of him like on a beach drinking beer and saying like something like, you know, thanks a lot, suckers, peace. And of course, everybody loses their minds. And then, like, 48 hours later, he's like, ah, oh, I'm just kidding, man. Like, I just wanted to show you guys how dangerous it is that people can exit. Like, <laughs> yeah. well, how many layers of moronic is that? Like, if you actually invested in that, wouldn't you be like, all right, well, I don't want to be involved with this guy anymore. Right. And who knows? It might not have been. It might not have been at all. But I remember when that came out, uh, the picture where he was sitting on the beach tons of comments were like recognizing which beach it was and he was in egypt apparently yeah and, and like i don't know there's lots of wild things there but on this particular exit scam i just like obviously everybody enjoyed this part but the fact that this guy was on 55 projects of, <laughs> of anything like i'm a crypto podcast host and i don't think i can name 55 crypto projects let alone like business projects and i Wow, that's just impressive. He's, he must be a hard worker. Yeah. Hey, well, I'm a consultant for 55 different podcasts, boys. <laughs> this is how I work. I'm on all of them. We do one hour per show per week. Yeah. As a quick side note, it is kind of crazy how with some governments, you just kind of like have to shrug it. They're like, oh, yeah, we had to stop because um, Russia. And you're just like, <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I mean. That makes sense. Russia I was actually Russia. wondering how I could respond with that because I actually wanted because I, I like to leave that door open sometimes in our conversations. And like this is one of those things that like part of the reason they chose this plot for their exit scam is because like I have to leave open some sliver of doubt that yeah, maybe Russian mobsters are extorting these guys. How would I prove it either way? But obviously <laughs> like I am not saying that's the case here. Uh, it's definitely an easier sell when you're talking about Russia, though. Not trying to hate on Russia, but let's just be real. If somebody's going to be like, oh, yeah, the government, I'm getting extorted, and I have to give the money, but it's really the police and all this stuff, and but it's all good. And then you tell me Russia, I'm like, all right, well, there's like at least a 10% chance this guy's telling the truth. So, <laughs> you know, you can't you can't say, like, Norway. I'm going to be like, nice, right. <laughs> Kareem's Russian accent was on point there. 
All right, that's it. The, another exit scam. It wasn't even like that big of a deal in the community. Everybody's just kind of used to it at this point, but I just saw it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Add it to the scam pile. Um, all right, so let's move on to real important groundbreaking news here. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and, and take the lead here. Uh, somebody tweeted something funny. So there you go. Oh, good. Welcome all right. El, El Crypto Monk. Well, actually, it wasn't funny, but he just, this was one of the highest voted posts in our cryptocurrency this week. So we're going to talk about it. Crypto Monk tweets out, quote, imagine th thinking that crypto is dead while Coinbase is doubling its staff, NASDAQ is working under the radar, and Bot is right around the corner. These guys are either degen or building the structure to inflate the biggest bubble we've seen so far far so i'm taking the, the question to you biggest michael Lockie, brent philbin are the guys at nasdaq and bot and coinbase degents or are they building the structure for the biggest bubble we've ever seen ever um well you know what those are not mutually exclusive kareem as we've seen with uh with other projects it is entirely possible to be a degen to party your ass off and still even be extorted and still say your roadmap is going to be met. So, uh, yeah. Also, I would like to say that if Coinbase is doubling its staff, maybe I can get unbanned at some point. That would be awesome. Um, but, I, I, yeah, I think they are DJs. Yeah, well, yeah, also, <laughs> first of all, unban me, step one. Step two, uh, what y'all need a y'all need an analyst? I'm only, I'm only on 51 projects right now. Gotta get to 55. <laughs> <laughs> so Brent, why don't you tell us real quick? I mean, I know you've covered this in the podcast before, but I don't think you have for our cryptocurrency. Why did you get banned from Coinbase? Uh, what did, who did you steal from? <laughs> Obviously, I did do a shady thing with uh, with Coinbase. Uh, so I logged on to Coinbase while I was in Cuba, which is really stupid i agree uh i didn't have any money on there I, or i had some money but they actually like it was in fiat so they just refunded it to me but i logged on in cuba where there, there's an embargo between the u.s and cuba so they can't have that i immediately got banned this was approximately a year ago ish i mean you were uh, you were there with me so it was, yeah it was for my birthday it was april of last year it was me and born's birthday <laughs> It, it was April? Close to a year. No, no, it wasn't April. No, no, it was now. It was right around the fantasy football time. Because there was a hurricane. Oh, is this when you went without me then? Because we went in April. Oh, okay. So, sorry. I've been I've been in Cuba a couple times. So many brags. Uh, they, so, it was, it was the time that I went that there was a hurricane, which I think was, like, probably about a year ago. And, yeah, I, they, they were like, okay, now you have to prove that you don't live in Cuba. I uploaded all my documents immediately, and nothing ever happened. I, I, I was emailing like once a week, then it went to once a month, and now I've just kind of given up. I even tried calling their hotline uh, when it first came out, and, they're, and I was like, yeah, it's been like two months. They're like, yeah, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> but, Brent, before we move on here to other stories, surely this is the only place you're banned from though right like this is just like a bad series of unfortunate events you're not like the type of guy that's banned from a bunch of places no no i don't get banned from like lots of places i don't uh, i feel like you I feel like you're thinking of a specific place that i'm banned from also but I, I don't know i don't know that i am wait are you i thought there was like another exchange that you didn't have access to all right what no no i don't i don't I'm like gemini like... now but like, I, I stopped using Gemini because I didn't right, like them. Right. Okay, Mike is with me. Mike, no, I am having, I'm at, I'm having a mental block. There's something else crypto-related. Okay, can you Brent. get on Bitrix, Brent? Yeah. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on all the other ones. I'm good. All right, all right, all right. All right. His story checks out. It looks like he is all a good right. guy. Tapping a <laughs> in Cuba or something. Um, what's going on with this uh, the bet? All right, so... I was so curious when I came across this, and I just have to hope that somebody in this chat that's listening can give me some answers. Uh, so I guess it was about two months old. Let's see. I'm going to post some stuff in here. I already posted it. All right, Go ahead. has got that. All right, so there's the OP is a little while earlier. Lambox. I'm going to copy that. 
Well, what it's referencing is this. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> this is the, the super OP from July the 10th of 2018, where Big Spank Bank said, uh, $3,700 Bitcoin by September, or I will drink a bottle of ketchup. When ketchup? Now, he's been called out. He has been called out by uh, Lambo and wants to know where he's at. Wants to know when when catch up. Yeah, where you at, bro? You gonna you're know, you gonna make these stupid bets? You're gonna tell somebody you're gonna eat your dick, or you're gonna tell somebody you're gonna drink ketchup? You better do it. And to be honest, of the two, you've got the better deal there. Yeah, I mean McAfee's got to cut off the ball. Drinking a bottle of ketchup is not that bad when you think about it. Yeah, so this guy needs to come out of nowhere, and that's where the. Uh, the favorite comment, I, I posted that a little bit earlier, Mike. What was your favorite comment there? Yes. So my favorite one that I came across was from the username, not my ketchup. And the reason why <laughs> this was so entertaining to me was uh, he just comments and says, as long as it's not buy bottles. <laughs> and, and then so, like, I always assume that this is just, like, somebody that made a troll account. No, this this account has like twenty thousand karma. So like, <laughs> the fact that like this isn't like a fresh ketchup account. This is Heinz fifty seven classic on the on the our cryptocurrency community. So and Mike, I'm curious. I'm so I want more info. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right off the bat, we're gonna we're gonna set you up for future future Reddit browsing. So for those of you that aren't familiar, Mike Mike is new to the Reddit game. Uh, Brent has been around forever, and, and I've been addicted for about six years or so. But here's the thing, Mike. Whenever you see something like this where, like, the username perfectly matches the thing and it's highly voted, rest assured that fellow Redditors already went through this guy's comment history to make sure that this account wasn't created specifically for this joke. Yep. And you can usually assume that if it's highly voted, there's a post history, there's a comment history, everybody already looked at it, and it's there for your enjoyment. Perfect. Well, no, no, I, I agree with that, and but just the fact that not only was it the top comment, but it was I didn't have to click on anything. It was clearly visible his his uh, karma points from the the main screen, so I didn't have to take any extra steps. But it was able to it was much more uh, uh, cleanly and efficiently and comedically delivered to me. Yeah. So I also love, by the way, this comment right here because it shows. Like, the whole point of this was that this guy should learn his lesson, right? And not make stupid bets. The top comment now is, uh, Efficient Dot. I'll promise to drink two bottles of ketchup <laughs> every day by the end of the month. And I know we won't get there, but at least I won't exit scan. <laughs> I will say this is a slippery slope that the, uh, the R Cryptocurrency mods are going to have to think about. The This shit started happening in the Fantasy Football subreddit uh, a couple years ago. Where people were just one-upping each other with ridiculous bets, like eating goldfish and stuff. And eventually they had to ban ridiculous bets from the subreddit because they were getting too out of hand. Really? Yeah. Well, the Crypto Basic Podcast strongly advocates for ridiculous bets. Yes. So, as long as we're a patch to this community, I promise we're going to fight for the ridiculousness. Yeah, and as a, as a side note, anybody who does make a ridiculous bet and follow through... Uh, we will be extending an invite to the next Art Cryptocurrency event so you can tell us all about your experience and, and the fact that you follow through with your bets. Actually, speaking of which, I have to do a punishment soon. Oh, yeah. I lost a bet on our show. So let's ask a new audience. I need to do some sort of humiliation bet that I, I have to pay the price for losing a portfolio competition that we had. So yeah, this, this is a great if there's point, any yeah. suggestions. Hey, you want to... If you guys have any ideas... You want to, like, just do what this guy said he was going to do and take his punishment for him? And drink a bottle of ketchup? Yep. <laughs> that was the first dozen ketchup. <laughs> I should have thought about this. Right? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, hold on a second, though. I don't want to put him on the spot. Mike, it, it could also be a bottle of mayo. Absolutely not. Zero percent. <laughs> Your choice... Ketchup, mayo. Your best shot would be mustard, probably. Uh, oh! No, no mustard. Also, no barbecue sauce. That's right. I, I I assumed that was too easy. I yeah, didn't even barbecue sauce. Off. No uh, way. Look, Kareem, I wouldn't allow you to accept barbecue sauce for this bet. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. So, what was the username of this guy? 
You know what? If this guy will reach out to us and agree to let Mike take his punishment and uh, and help us with like either coming on the show or doing a video or something, <laughs> we might be willing to get this done. Somebody just enters the chat and says, I joined it, and the first thing I hear is, <laughs> your best shot will be Mustard. And he's like, what on earth did I miss? All Elliot, you need to know, Elliot, is that Mustard is our best shot, barbecue sauce is out of the picture, and ketchup is still on the side. Yeah, ketchup's tough, man. <laughs> and there's a Miracle Whip ICO coming. We had a six-month portfolio contest on our podcast. This is what happened, by the way, in case people are wondering. We all had bets all along the way. It was whoever made, you know, picked the best portfolio. Ruthless! Welcome, yeah, Ruth Ruthless! Dog. Whoa! It, it Guys, is the most have, keto, you're right. We have a very special friend here, Ruthless. Uh, Poker <laughs> Crusher, moderator of the Crypto Basic Podcast Discord. Welcome to the show, buddy. Anyway. He's up saying, really uh, early. Yeah. yeah. You're in California, bro. That's yeah, he's in Cali. Um, anyway, so Mike, think about that. I like the idea of you drinking a bottle of ketchup. And hmm, just as I remind everybody, it's because you pick shitty coins. Coins muy sad. You know what? I, I'm tentatively accepting the bet or the offer, um, and I just have I just want to privately go over a couple of the details. And uh, I think this is going to be a nice addition to that thread. So. Yeah. Let's make let's make a post that we're willing to accept. This guy's humili humiliation because, you know, we've got uh, some... You know what? Uh, yeah, I, I'm willing to accept this guy's humiliation. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. This is good stuff. Also, so Mike, I would also consider, like, if it's the small bottles, we could do, like, the little setup. You know, you could do a little bottle of mustard, a little bottle of mayo, a little <laughs> bottle of... And then we could put all the coins that you picked on your portfolio on the oh, label. Oh, my God. That's funny, actually. If you want to do five... <laughs> five mini bottles of things that i don't like and label them you know those uh those really nice like have you seen at hard rock they have these like glass ketchup bottles but they're, they're supposed to be the big ones but they're only like travel size they're like so ridiculous there's so much glass for a little jar are you familiar with these at all yeah i know i know what you're talking about by the <laughs> way and if we were if we were living closer together i would definitely say that since you picked bitcoin in your portfolio i was gonna like congratulate you for picking that one so the fifth bottle would have the bitcoin label and it would look like coca-cola but it would actually be soy sauce at the end you think you're about to be able to Damn. <laughs> swallow it all down but anyway i think we're getting a little too excited right. here. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, guys. don't do syrup i can tell you that from experience that is terrible do not chug a bottle of syrup no matter how much money somebody do gives syrup you chug? Yeah, I, I was given somewhere around a hundred bucks to chug a bottle of syrup at a diner, and it was a really, really, really bad idea. Uh, I don't even know if I was drunk, but I definitely chugged a bottle of syrup and shit my brains out for the the entire next day. Like it was easily the worst of my life. So. Oh my God, ruthless! He's reminding you about the queso you ate for fifty bucks once. Oh, uh, yep. Between the three of us, we had a lot of Brett eating food for obnoxious <laughs> amounts of reason. All right, and I put a link there to the portfolio stats so you guys could see the uh, the portfolios and the balances. When we started this portfolio, we thought, oh, who's going to make the most money? Yeah, we no. started in January. Oops. So it ended up being a game of who didn't get to zero. Right, who lost the least? <laughs> uh, and I'll tell you, Kareem was the least biggest loser but uh, I'm not even sure he's all that impressed. Yeah, well, I just, you know, I just pay boring coins. So, question. Yeah, January. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, Elliot, it was actually March, just, but just so you know, when we started this portfolio contest, Mike was like, you know what we should do? We should buy all of the coins that we picked for the portfolio contest so it can be real. <laughs> and we ended up choosing not to. Best decision. We yeah, made Kareem, as a it was so much better that I left my money in the other coins that weren't part of the portfolio competition. That was a way better decision <laughs> <Yeah>. by me. <laughs> hey, probably. I don't know. <laughs> All, right, All right, guys. So, let's question. move on here. Yeah. Did you guys see the new Nike ad with Charlie Lee? They've actually hired Charlie Lee. He is. He's now. It's part of a dual ad with the new Kaepernick stuff. It, it really works out. So I, I hope everybody can see it, but the, the message is believe in something, even if it means selling everything. <laughs> so Charlie when Lee's I came across this, I actually didn't recognize Charlie Lee's face. 
and oh I, was my God. I was hoping that somebody else did. So I just like skipped by it and just hoped that one of you guys decided to include this on here. But yes, it is significantly okay. better. I'm now so that I, happy now that. you said that though, Mike, because I'm gonna skip ahead to my favorite comment and then we'll actually get into the conversation. My favorite, okay. How about this? I'll put it this way. So this is Charlie Lee. If you guys can click on it, there's a picture of Charlie Lee. <laughs> I just read this. With the ad. Yeah, yeah don't, don't read ahead. Don't read ahead. So <clears throat> I, what I wanted to talk to you guys about was the, instead of picking my favorite comment, there were two themes in the Charlie Lee thread. Half of the people were basically saying, oh, this guy's a scumbag, you know, for selling. And, and he just was using an excuse and blah, blah, blah. And they hate him, right? He influenced the price. Da, da, da. The other half of the people were saying, why is everyone hating on him so much? He said that the prices were in a bubble. He's allowed to sell. He also disclosed it, which he didn't have to do. So the other side is kind of like defending him. And then my favorite comment said, is that the guy from The Hangover? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. I didn't assume that or I didn't even I didn't think of that. But it is really funny as a comment. Yeah, it's hilarious. I'm going to go upload it right now. He does look a little bit like him. And that guy's hilarious, by the way. Side note. The Asian guy from the Hangover, the comedian, he's actually a doctor. Practices medicine and everything, and stopped to follow his dream of being a comedian, and ended up in the Hangover. Pretty impressive. But anyway, uh, so guys, before we move on from this story, little revisit. What side are you on? Charlie Lee, a big scumbag because he sold all his Litecoin, or he had every right to do it, didn't do anything wrong. My, my answer is very quick. Uh, I I have seen zero evidence that he did anything that I consider disrespectful or wrong. Yeah, he he actually told everybody, which was which was nice of him. Um, <clears throat> you know, he I, I, people are like, oh, and then he went in and he bought Nano or whatever. He went into the Nano subreddit and asked some people about Nano. That's true, but the uh, you know he like he didn't have to tell anybody he was selling all of his bags. He told everybody he was selling all his bags, and he like. I don't know if that means he has less confidence in what Litecoin is or has become or will become. Um, and I don't, I'm not familiar with whether he kept developing it after that. But he said there was a conflict of interest. Everything that he said was being construed as a way to manipulate the price and all this. Um, you know, I think, he, I think his reasons are probably not public. Like, he, like what, whatever he actually decided as his reason for doing this is not what he signaled to everybody like he maybe he thought the price was too high maybe he thought well like coin doesn't really have a place now that like things like nano are are doing it it doesn't have like you know smart contracts i don't know but uh but he did tell everybody so like he can't it's not like somebody went and found the wallets and they're like holy shit charlie Lee sold all of his litecoin like three months ago blah front page right. scam like he was just like yeah i'm selling all my litecoin guys so, like there's Here's my reasons for saying it. So I can't really fault the guy for it. I, I agree with you, Brent. And this sentiment was echoed in the comments. Um, you know, I think a lot of people were saying precisely that. He was transparent about it. And one of the comments that was trying to go the other way, I think did an analogy that is misplaced. So, so there's a gentleman named Zoo Animals on Wheels, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> yes. Uh, but he says something along the lines of like, you know, if he just came out and said that it's overpriced and I'm getting out that he would respect him more, but that the reasons really didn't make sense. And then he makes this analogy to Elon Musk. And he's like, can you imagine if Elon Musk came out tomorrow and said that he just sold all of his Tesla shares so that he could tweet about it without a conflict of interest. Then a few weeks later, the share price went down 75%. Um, well, he couldn't because this kind of action is illegal in the stock market. Well, all that aside, um, I don't really think that it's it's necessarily correct to compare the CEO of a company that is producing and selling something like Tesla to the creator of what is supposed to be a de decentralized network that is not ran by anybody, right? Like, if we don't care, um, what, like, I don't want to say we don't care who Satoshi is. Obviously, everybody cares who Satoshi is, but like, Bitcoin is Bitcoin, right? And Litecoin is supposed to be Litecoin. I never owned any Litecoin, so maybe I'm a little bit too, like, separated or dispassion maybe people that bought litecoin feel a little bit more burnt but number one just because he created litecoin doesn't mean he, that he now has to hold for eternity and he can never sell and number two it's not a company it's not a company where he's getting the the sales numbers and we don't know or he's getting to see the reports ahead of time. it's just 
a decentralized network. Nobody runs it. Nobody controls it. So I don't really think that Charlie had a responsibility to like, I don't know, like watch his investment go down with Litecoin. Although I do agree that his stated reason, oh, I didn't want to manipulate, you know, I conflict of interest. Eh, that's probably bullshit. But what else can he say? Like, I oh, think yeah. the, it, it, is a, it is a bit of a blanket statement. And I think that it's almost certain that it is, you know, probably about 5% of the overall reason that he did it. But it's the it's the easiest one to just put out in public. It's the easiest press release to write for yourself. And, you know, he owes us nothing. I think that, that him even going this far is a courtesy. Well, yeah. okay, okay. That's where I'll stop a little bit. You know, you're right that he doesn't owe us anything technically. But he's talking to the community that has made him a very successful and rich man, right? Like, without the crypto community, these crypto founders are don't you know don't have what they have so i'm not saying he owes us necessarily but he's a product of this community he wants to remain a part of this community and that's why he's communicating with this community and there's an argument to be made i know this is really tough to do and i really don't blame him i probably would have handled it the same way but it would, it would have been really baller and really direct and probably people would have had to respect it if he came out and said guys these prices are insane i'm i'm selling and we'll see how it plays out in the future he did kind of say that. He he also he, he like hinted at it. No, no, he not he didn't hint at it. He specifically gave a date, and he was like, uh, "The futures contracts, the first futures contracts expire on this date. It's gonna be bad." He like said it. It wasn't at, it wasn't in the same tweet when he got rid of the Litecoin, but it was like within a day or two or something like that. Like he was he he very specifically said like this is this is a bad spot. So. He he was it wasn't it wasn't even a hint. I feel like he was pretty direct in saying like this. There, I think we're in a bubble and all that stuff. So it it was uh it, and who like whatever we're like looking back and he's he happened to be right. He could have been wrong, but <clears throat> like my <clears throat> excuse me, like Mike said, yeah, that, it's really hard to figure out what his actual reasons were because you have to signal like the reasons that the community won't hang you for. So <clears throat> yeah. And Brent, the last thing you said is really important, you know, before we get off of this is there's definitely results oriented thinking here where people, a lot of people are mad because he got out when the rest of us didn't, so to speak, where like if he had been like, like oh, this is going to be a bad day. And then he sold all his Litecoin and then Litecoin went up two or three times in price. Everybody would just laugh at Charlie. There'd probably be a lot less hatred, but because he was correct and the price crashed, it feels like he cheated when he did it. Yeah. Yep, agree on all fronts. Don't I don't hate Charlie Lee. Uh, he is kind of he is kind of like accidentally funny sometimes, but that's it. <clears throat> like he gets like a little bit douchey on Twitter, and it's kind of funny. I don't I, I don't have any examples to ask me, but I just remember like laughing at like him being kind of tone deaf a little bit. Sounds like another Elon Musk. I gotta tell you, Elliot, uh, as, as a quick comment there. It's been really sad for me seeing uh, Elon slowly do the whole Batman thing where you live long enough to be the villain. Because, oh man, Elon is like such a hero. And I'm not trying to hate on him. Like, Elon's the shit on a lot of things. But you just see him like slowly go, you know, super maniacal, which I guess is totally understandable when you're a millionaire and everybody's, you know, well, uh, I don't want to get. Uh, <laughs> I was about to get pretty graphic, but yes, <laughs> in that state, it was, it's it's weird to be in that state and not have it affect your psychology over time. It's too much power, too much fame, too much money. But yeah, yeah, not not. I hope Elon doesn't keep going down that route. Nah, he's fine now that he's like, you know, shared blunt with Joe Rogan. I'm sure he's gonna calm down. Oh, yeah, that's true. He took a hit of weed. He's good. He's cool. <laughs> have you listened to that yet, Kareem? No, no, no. I, I actually have been planning on it. Did you think it was really good? I've had a couple of people ask me if I watched that. I listened to the first half, um, and I, I've i already needed to commit, like, three or four full listens because it's impossible that I'm going to get... I, I'm going to get, like, the same experience the first four times I listen to it start to finish. So, like, it, it's dense in the sense that it's just so much quality for th three straight hours. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, I'm definitely going to want to hear it. And, and I'll clarify one thing. 
even though it's pretty clear that Elon's becoming kind of an egomaniac weird situation, like, whatever, still... Ah, uh, becoming is... Putting their... Yeah, maybe... Has was... been ever, forever. Like, he's been an asshole, like, since he started. He's been an asshole since PayPal. It's gotten worse, though, Brent. It, yeah, but it's gotten worse, though. You go from, like, snappy to, like... Yeah, it's not the same thing to be a little bit of a dick and be snarky. Uh, it hasn't gotten worse. He forgot to, like, filter himself. That's all. Like, everybody has always said he's an asshole that's worked for him and all that, so. Right, right, right. Well, okay, but the very fact that he's filtering himself less is probably a sign of it getting worse. Maybe. Uh, he's just giving less of a fuck. Maybe he read the subtle art of not getting, giving a fuck and uh, was like, you know what? I'm going to call this guy a pedo guy. Fuck that. So. Good... Pedo guy! Oh my god, and I saw... I did see a reference to that, by the way. Okay, so I'm going to catch everybody up. We had a big fight on the podcast. <laughs> Not really a big fight. We, it was like we like to debate, you know. We've, we've been friends forever, and this is what we do. And we were debating how responsible Elon Musk was for the comment that he made about the Thai guy. Where he's like, oh, pedo guy. And our, Mike and I were saying, like, the way he said it seemed like he had extra information. I don't know if you guys saw, but there somebody tweeted something, and Elon was like, oh, why do you think he hasn't sued me for libel? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Basically, and then he snap got sued. That was hilarious. Yeah, he did. yeah, then he got a reply from the guy's lawyer. And it was like, you should probably read your mail because you've been sued over this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the risk you take, I guess. All right, guys, we got 10 uh, minutes left, and Brent still hasn't told us anything about Gemini. Uh, oh, no, that's Mike. Oh, oh. Well, Brent, you shut your face, Mike. <laughs> so, uh, I was very excited to see this. This is something that I've talked about, I think, on this recording as well as our normal podcast several times. Um, I'm excited to have more stablecoin access in the uh, um, in the markets. And Gemini has launched their own stablecoin that's pegged to the U.S. dollar. They're naming it the GUSD, the Gemini U.S. dollar. Um, side note, the 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 tag the ticker or whatever is GUSD I would prefer they drop the S to just make it good or drop the D and just make it Gus no I considered <clears> that but Gus doesn't bring my my brain anywhere and GSD doesn't do much so I've decided it should go down to three and they should take the S out and just call it good and I would prefer that but anyway, good. Um, just so people are caught up uh, Gemini is a New York trust company they are a fiat onboarding ramp by um, Brent. What they have like four coins at the time? Is that what I understand? I, no, I I, really use they only have uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin, and Zcash, as far as I know. I stopped using them when they raised their fees astronomically and started randomly shut. Like that, we have a, a friend of the podcast, Crypto Candor, and they just randomly shut our account down with no uh, no explanation, no nothing. We're just like, yep, sorry, you're not allowed to use this anymore. So they're. And, like not even like they're, they're like oh there's regulatory things like weren't sure what's going on with your know your customer nah they just shut her down no reason so I, I have been not involving myself with Gemini since then so this is not going to be as good of news for me as it is for everybody else just because I've already decided that I think they're kind of shady is everyone still there Oh, all right. I, I was on mute because my dog hates peace and quiet. Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> my dog is dead and asleep. I, I think we may have lost Mike, though. Yeah, Mike, are you there? Yeah, it looks like we did. All right. Did to finish this? No, no, he's... <laughs> BRB, what the... <laughs> uh, hello, hello. Hey, he's back. Hey. Hey. hey, Mike, welcome back. We're yeah. uh, just having a radio show here. Um, so two things, two things happened there. One, uh, I interrupted Brent twice, but I accidentally unplugged my mic, so I didn't interrupt him at all. So that was a positive. <laughs> I was disconnecting my mic mid, mid, mid rant didn't work out very well, but we're back. Okay, right um, away. So let's let's kind of bring this back on topic here. I'm, I'm not saying that I think Gemini is a fantastic exchange. I'm saying that Gemini is a large enough exchange that I believe it's going to have an impact on on all the crypto markets. And 
So what this uh, stable coin is going to be, it's going to be pegged to the US dollar even. It's, you know, they're saying it's strictly pegged. It is built on the Ethereum network, which I think is a huge victory for Ethereum. And it is a traditional ERC-20 token. So why do I think that this is important? Well, the ability to, to have stable coins offline, I think, is going to be extremely, extremely valuable, especially when you can use it in your MetaMask. You can put it in, you know, wherever you store your Ethereum, um, you know, whether it's in a, a Ledger S or, or whatever. And it's going to essentially, that can be a a cash app a paypal or whatever if you and your friends decide that you want to be able to exchange money in crypto all you have to do is use a stable coin i think that this is a very big win for uh, the community as a whole um but a couple of details on what this actually means so there's going to be an oversight committee including u.s regulators for this most notably they're going to be uh watched by the new york state department of financial services um, the all of the dollars that are going to be backing these stable coins are held in a U.S. bank, and it is eligible for what is known as FDIC pass-through deposit insurance. Now, I had no clue what that means, so I decided to do a little research for you guys. Uh, apparently, it's a federal deposit insurance coverage that applies to the interests of owners or beneficiaries of a qualified account. So, so each beneficiary, which you know is the person on the account plus you know, the people that are directly tied to it, they'd be eligible for up to $250,000 worth of insurance on the accounts. Now, I think this is a somewhat common thing, but it's a very uncommon thing in the crypto markets. So that insurance on the accounts, I think is gonna be a pretty important factor down the road. Yeah, that's uh, one of the one of the reasons that I'll often tell people it's okay to, to put your money on Coinbase is because they actually have not FDIC insurance, but they have insurance against like hacks and that kind of thing um you know exchanges are still exchanges but the it it is despite my misgivings about gemini this is a good uh way to set up a stable coin so that they're they're getting rid of all of the shady shit that's going on with tether i'm a little bit scared that if this works takes off and replaces tether that we're going to have a problem because people are going to want to cash out their tethers and there's not going to be any money there for them to cash out but uh, in the meantime, this is going to be good, I think. Yeah, I agree. I mean, look, and at the end of the day, I think it's good for the space uh, for Tether to be replaced in general, just because, well, at least uh, myself, I know Brent, Mike, probably also on the same page. Like, we don't, you know, I, we know Tether's been technically stable for a long time, but we've always been super skeptical. Just a reminder that they never went through with a full audit they, could, they promised that they would the community was very um, adamant that they wanted to see the fact that tether was actually back they hired an auditing company which they then fired <laughs> uh, they were like no nah, you're making this too complicated uh, and they're like what are you talking about we just want to see your bank number nah nah, nah, nah. we yeah. gotta like go through all this other stuff and then they went and got not another auditing company, an accounting company, but they got a, a law firm to no, put out a statement that said... That no, they got property. their law firm, their lawyer. <laughs> what well, the... I mean, I'm sure they hired them for this. Yeah, obviously, they're not getting a, a lawyer that they, they're not paying. No, 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 no. no. The, the lawyer was already employed by them before they went and got him for this oh, purpose. Really? Yes. that tether's plan after that was basically to just stay under the radar don't bring a lot of attention to ourselves uh and whatever they've done it successfully but i would like to see a stable coin that i know for a fact is actually backed one to one if it's pretending to be a u.s dollar then i want to see a u.s dollar backing don't believe that that's what's happening with tether all right well that's uh as far as the true usd is concerned i have not looked into true usd um i know it is on binance uh but if it can be withdrawn and stored uh offline i have not um taken the time to find that out well spoiler alert i i am finishing up our research for our stable coins episode which is going to be released tomorrow so mike and i are going to record that a little bit later and we'll know a lot more about stable coins in uh, a couple hours 
All right, so since we are coming close to the end here, though, does anybody have any questions or comments? Does anybody want to hop on or anything that they want to throw in the voice chat for us to... Usually we get on a little bit earlier and we get a chance to have a little back and forth on the chat. Um, but if anybody has any questions or anything like that or any stories we may have missed or really anything. There were a couple of uh, there were a couple of stories that were thrown into the chat. I, the the miracle whip coin was we kind of glossed over that, but they they tweeted out that they're thinking about doing an ICO and they put their like logo on top of a coin. And I am I believe in the minority of people that think that miracle whip is significantly better than mayonnaise. Uh, I always prefer miracle whip. I'm, I'm just saying, like, thanks for the update. If there's going to be a Mayo coin or a Miracle Whip coin, I am going to be taking the Miracle Whip coin. That is the. Okay. I want and my you're pound of Miracle Whip. The ICO, you freak. I mean, it depends on what the perks are. If uh, it, right. if I get like a lot of Miracle Whip, I mean, I might. I'm, I buy enough of it anyways. So. Uh, there was definitely a couple other things like uh, there was a mention of the Coinbase joining BlackRock. For an ETF, I I skipped over that just oh, like you guys did because chat. like we don't know enough to talk about that. So if that's something that we don't want to just spout off at the mouth about, we need to actually research something like Check that. Check our Friday flagship for a full detailed analysis on Coinbase potentially joining BlackRock to explore crypto ETFs. Yep. Uh, ooh, there we go. Um, so I, I scrolled up a little bit too far and found. A previous thing from somebody saying that there was a meeting with Bitcoin Private. Uh, that that's interesting because I fucking hate Bitcoin Private. They they literally sunk my ship in the portfolio competition. Worst one ever. All right, you know what? Since you're gonna bring that up, that's a, that's a good way to, to to let everybody know a little more. Here's how it went down. When we had our coins ready, and Brent was like, "All right, we're gonna start on this date." All of us picked our coins for the portfolio, had them ready to go. <laughs> and Brent, on the day that the portfolio contest was about to start, it was like, yeah, my fifth coin is Bitcoin private, which hadn't even been released. <laughs> and we're like, dude, just pick something else. It's just a contest, just pick a coin that exists so we don't have to wait multiple weeks and we can all start at the same time. And Brent's like, no, 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 we're gonna wait until Bitcoin private is released and it'll be part of my portfolio. We ended up having to wait multiple days, I believe more than a week, until finally Bitcoin private got well, released. Well, I wanted Z Classic and then, and then this whole found thing. Out, Brent, I'm telling a story, buddy. This is very <laughs> And then Brent, after a week and a half that we have to wait around and beg them not to pick Bitcoin private and he insisted on it. Then he found out that it was shit. And then it started <laughs> tanking so he starts a campaign amongst our listeners to try to get, oh, maybe Kareem and Mike will let me change my, a coin. And he just wanted us to, like, let him pick another random coin. How, why, under what concept, we have no clue. But we stood strong. We told him no. And if he had lost this contest, I would have made him tattoo the Bitcoin private logo on his chest. But unfortunately, Mike lost. So we All right, be Brent. Some catch up. Uh, <laughs> what is your... Bitcoin private investment worth right now? Uh, from the podcast? I don't know. It what, went, what did it finish? It went down like 97% or 96% or okay. something. It was the worst so coin. So I remember you you were very adamant about PIVX being the alternative. So I'm trying to look back. Oh, uh, PIVX would have done just as bad. Um, yeah. Um, if I, I had put Zencash in there, it would have been current okay. Math, oh my god, this, my current this math. is my favorite chart ever. Sorry, guys, if you're still in it you need to click on this and watch brent's coin perform pick pick the highest point the peak that's where brent picked it <laughs> it got into the market and then it's literally just been a nice straight down no actually i picked it at the first peak the second peak was the first week or first month that i won like the mini the mini contest so somebody from my team was able to to win and then and then it went to nothing uh, all right, whatever. Anyway, enough about stupid ass Bitcoin <laughs> that, private. That. Turns out that coin is literally controlled by five individual people, and it's uh, the worst ever. So please, your Pivx would be worth like forty five dollars. So, I don't oh think really? Been enough to get you? No, I was I was behind Kareem by like Nano almost caught me up to Kareem when it went like nuts. 
right there, but then I didn't, so. <laughs> That's a shame. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> well, said if exactly I had to lose, I'm glad Brett didn't win. Thank you, Mike. I am shit. I, losing to me is the worst. Kareem's over here, like, you know, putting off what he's going to make you do for a week. I would have had a 30-minute long soliloquy about how I'm the best. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, you know, some of us can act like we've been there before. That's true. I pretty much give that to Kareem every time I see him. <laughs> All right, guys, anything else you want to say to the good people of this cryptocurrency discord event? I think that's going to wrap it, us, uh, wrap it up for us this week. We'll be back next week again at 11 a.m. on Tuesdays. We're going to go through another recap. Uh, feel free to join our discord or follow us on, on iTunes, wherever you listen to podcasts. Crypto Basic Podcast. Dot com. Right, dot com. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for everything. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week. We out! Dun 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 The members of the Crypto Basic Podcast are not financial advisors. Good call. They are idiots. This is not financial advice. It is for entertainment purposes only. We are idiots, especially Brent. We out. <laughs>